You are the chosen one. Hello again. Once again, this is Korean from Chosen One Studios, and we're here in Lakeshore because this is where we need to do to talk to Gazak and figure out what we need to do next. Oh, you discovered all three eyes? Well, aren't you the expert at finding things? Next, I intend to go to the Flame Mountain and search for the Hero Sword. The Sage Staff said that if I asked you, you'd show me the way. Hero Sword? You've become my rival. Still, Flame Mountain. Never been there. Hmm. Eh? You don't know? Ah, hold on. Flame must be on the mountain the opposite of ice. If ice is east of the lake, the west must be flame. Um... 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 I'm back! Oh my, hello, Audible. Eh? A flame mountain in the west? I don't know whether it's there, but when I was coming home, a cave opened underneath the western waterfall. Looks like the stone was moved by the water. Oh, that's it? That's just like my wife. Otto, you'd better look. Ah, Otto? Please, won't you have some tea? Young people should take their time. Heals you, but we don't really need that desperately. And part of that is because, well, right here we could heal if we need to. That said, we're about to go on to a very wonderful little region. It's right over here inside of the waterfall, which is actually east by our standards. But that's fine. Because here is the waterfall cave. Which is some really awesome music. And some really easily killed enemies. Really, the enemies around here are dispatched so simply that you really... If you are feel like you're at all under-leveled at this point, aka you feel like you could get experience out of these guys, and if you'll notice, they do give quite a fancy bit of experience for how far I am in level, then, hey, this is a perfect place to grind. But I would say don't waste too much time grinding here, because there's actually a much better area coming up. This is my second time through this area recently, because my last recording attempt kind of bombed due to um, forgetting to press the record button until after I was done. So that didn't really work. That said, not upset, because this area has amazing music. So an excuse to go through it again? Thank you! Falcom really outdid themselves on this one, and Falcom did do the music even if they didn't create the game. Which is partially why some people think Mask of the Sun might have the idea of East 4 more right, just because a lot of the music is used in places that actually are na it's named after. Now there we just fought some weird Donnie Darko-like enemies. Never really liked that movie, but you gotta admit there's a resemblance. A weird white bunny kangaroo. There's our fast AI enemy. They don't really pose too much more of a threat than the normal enemies in this area. And as you can see, they give just as much of a healthy amount of experience. So you're not gonna hear me complaining about their presence. Also, you might think that like I'm cheating, because it seems like I'm just ramming right into these guys. The last time I went through this area, I didn't take any damage in this entire section. I probably will just screw myself up by saying that, but I'm honestly just actually playing well. Or these guys just have really bad hitboxes for doing damage as opposed to being killed. That's a possibility. But I can assure you, I did test out and got myself hit against one of these guys just to, to prove to myself that I hadn't somehow glitched the game. And sure enough, I hadn't. So, yeah, I'm not cheating. I'm just good, apparently. Which was nice to feel. As you can see, I am gaining a little bit of experience, and there's, by the way, our slow, ponderous enemy for the area. Just because we are nearing a point where if I don't have max experience, it's going to be very, very painful to continue, and health in, back in the older East games always determined how far you were in level. As you can see, we're pretty close to the end, but till we have 255 health, we're not going to have enough for the final boss battle to be, well, sane. At least not some of the first parts. And there, oh, actually, that might have been the same place I got hit before when I was doing my test. But yeah, nope, they can injure me. They're just not very good at it. That said, there are, however, good at training me how to be a better sword. Good old Otto. And that weird creature again. I really don't even know what to call them. And since this game doesn't have a beast theory, I never know. Then again, Falcom is finally making their own version of Beast 4, with the Forest of Celceta for the Vita, I think it's called, the PSP2. So, I look forward to seeing all these weird creatures get names. They might just make all new creatures, for all I know, because this might not be what they imagined. But, at the same time, they might. I look forward to seeing what happens with that. That's part of why I got re-inspired to do this project, because someone's got to get this game out there, and I figured it should be me doing a good quality let's play of it. So, here we are! 
for these guys, golden guys. They do die faster when you come at them from a different angle, but they die all the same. Also, just lest you think that this is supposed to be the Mountain of Fire, nah, this is just how we get to the Mountain of Fire. The Mountain of Fire is on the other side. As right now, we're just crossing the lake. Which is impressively long, right? But then again, it is long enough to have a town named after it, so it makes sense. Gah. Oh well, I had a pretty good stride going. And here. This is the actual Fire Mountain. Good music too. And we see the enemy will be seen for a majority of the Fire Mountain. These little flame guys. They do pretty good damage when they connect, but they also give pretty good experience when you connect, and that's going to be happening a lot more often. Since my power level has, is half decent at this point, by the way there's a fire pillar, much like the spikes, doesn't make any sense I can kill it, but I'm not going to debate it. All of this giving me enough experience to finally hit a level. And now we've gotten our hands on the nice side shield. This will give us a nice little defense boost. Move over to shield, pumps us up by a lovely little six points. That's definitely good enough for me. Not good enough to be our final defense boost for the area, but just like how we got all the flame equipment in the ice temple, we're going to get all the ice equipment in the flame temple. Kind of weird how those things work, but in a way it makes sense. After all, if you seal something that's fire in the fire temple, well, they, I guess the reverse makes sense too. Just say that other enemy, by the way, it looks like it should like it looks like some kind of maybe steam powered thing or. Maybe it's just on fire, but for some reason it reminds me of a pig. That said, it's not really all that threatening with enemy by itself. And now we can just walk our way out through these guys. Aw. This guy's give you experience. And that was our third type of enemy for this area. The lovely little lizard knight. These guys all give great experience, by the way. So I recommend eh, hitting a level or two. There's our second piece of equipment over there on the left. I love the eye motif, because it's definitely an eye. And now uh, we've gotten the ice plate, it'll give us a nice defense increase. So before we got six points, and this is giving us another eight. Making a total of 14 points of defense increase just in here. You can consider that out of 255. That's not bad. When you consider that it actually gives more, considering that's just in comparison to our old armor, it makes it even better. We have one last goodie to pick up here, but we're not quite there yet. And there's one of those lizards, and one of those weird steampunk pigs. I don't really know what to call them. All the same, all these things go down pretty nice and easy. This dungeon is really pretty quick, and most of my frustrations with the game don't really show up here. I mean, it's not the most interesting dungeon, and the combat is... Oh, here's an important spot. It's too hot, I can't go any further. And that's where we need to go to get this hero sword. So, what are we gonna do? Well, clearly we have to find something to fix that fire. I mean, that's no surprise. But what is going to fix that fire? Well, I already told you, but you can figure it out. A lot of things these have to do with swords. But before we can get the sword, we must get the ruby jewel. Looks like the one from East One, not East Two. And there's the ruby jewel. You can tell its purpose by where it sits. It sits over with the sapphire jewel and what used to be the topaz. Those are the items that increase our elemental sword's magic. We'll be checking those out later. But for now, we have more of these guys to kill, and we have to get across that, that impasse that we have. Because, well, frankly, if we don't get through, we're kind of not going to be able to proceed with the game, and I'm kind of in the mood of getting East 4 done. Not that it's an absolutely terrible game, but it's not very great, and I have many other games I'd like to show off. At the very least, I definitely want to get to East 6 eventually, because the Ark of Nepishtim is amazing, and... I'm thinking about doing East Origin 2 now, it's just finally translated. Great game. I kind of want to do something small between this and another East game, though. So if anyone has anything in mind... Not a Mega Man game, though, really. 
I'm not really sure. Regardless, let me know. I uh, put that in the comments of the video that I already started uploading. Well, already uploaded. I waited before I started this. But now I have to be very careful, because these areas, these little tiles, do quite a bit of damage. Yeah, we don't want to step on those. That moon symbol is ominous. But, no worries. It just leads us to a little place we can heal and get a nice little treat. Part of the reason we didn't want to grind before, because, well, besides the little bit you saw I did, otherwise there's nothing on either side. But right up here, there's a mask down there. With a little moon symbol. Hmm. But the mask isn't there when we come down instead. We have gotten the he 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 ice wind sword. A very nice little piece of equipment. We'll boost up our offense to match our defense. Well, not quite match. But we go in there and we check it out. And there we go. That's a 15 point offense increase. None too shabby for this game. So, now we're just going to carry back on, and we have a little bit more we really need to get done. Because we came here with a very specific purpose. We have to get ourselves a sword. Because a warrior desires a sword, ow, and a sword desires truth. That's what Soul Calibur 2 taught me. Probably the only thing Soul Calibur 2 taught me besides the Link is cheap. So as you can see now, we just tear through these enemies. They're just nothing compared to us anymore. But that's not really the sword we came here for, which means that giving us this now is kind of silly, because you're about to give us a much better piece of equipment. Light from the Ice Sword! Ice for the Ice Sword, Blood for the Blood God, Bones for the Bone God, and Ground for the Ground Faring Adel, whenever it wants to get around to it. No way to speed this up. It made a path! That it did. And now time for the most ridiculous non-boss in this game. The real trick is just to not let them surround you, but it's kind of hard to let them do that. I swear I haven't grinded levels except for the absolute barest minimum moment I needed. Watch the other videos. You saw I've gotten myself be be beaten and buffeted around. But now the real reason we didn't grind yet? You'll see there's nothing over there, but... Do, 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 hero sword. We have now achieved hero status. The hero sword takes us up by another impressive margin. That's another 15 points. Yeah, that's nothing to sneeze at. Which is going to make getting this next level kind of... What's the word? A walk in the park simple. We can now walk through those flame pillars and destroy them without needing to keep repassing. These pigmen are now even more of a non-issue. Our only problem is, we got the hero sword, but the hero sword by itself isn't what we came here for. We came here so that we could awaken the spirit of Le Lord Lafons and get it so that you know, Lord Lafons could help us take out El Deal because he's kind of gone off the deep end. It's really too bad, because poor Lisa. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's, there's only one thing from the previous game I've ever mentioned. Or from, or from, yeah, in a previous game that I mentioned would be important again. And that's finally going to come into play. And that'll be a rather nice little detail. To get to that, we'll just need to go outside. Yeah, I know I grounded that level out, but we're getting very close to the end game. And some things get really nasty from here on out, so one more level wasn't gonna hurt. Still have to be careful, as those tiles still hurt. As proof of concept, if you touch another tile, it hurts you again. Even getting off hurts. But now, we'll just use the wing again. Now let's go back to Kazakh. Ah, she'll heal us fully. Let's go up. Talk to Gazak. This is the Hero Sword! Incredible! I should make a discovery that won't be eclipsed by yours. Too bad you can't. Wanna be Raba? Now let's have some tea. And you know what? A spot of tea sounds nice to me too. So before we talk to the Elder... That is a weird little glitch. 
before we talk to the Elder, I'm going to get myself a nice little spot of tea. Probably not tea, but something else similar. And then continue on. But for now, it's going to be the last upload for today, so thank you all for watching. I hope you've been enjoying, and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.